Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Councilwoman Quante Toombs. I represent uh, District 2 on Metro Council. You're currently in District 2, so welcome um, if you're from outside of the district. Uh, we are going to start with the public comment uh, session for the East Bank uh, Stadium Committee. Thank you to Councilman Mendez, Bob Mendez, uh, Councilperson at Large, uh, who is the chair of the committee. We have some council members in attendance. Our neighbor, Councilman Brandon Taylor, District 21, Councilman Brett Withers, uh, District 6, Councilwoman at Large, Berkeley Allen, and Councilwoman at Large, Zofat Suara. Are there any other council members in the audience? So again, once again, thank you for coming out. Uh, we wanna hear your opinions on the proposed stadium deal, whether you're for or against or indifferent, we wanna hear your voice. And I'm gonna turn it over to Councilman Mendez, who's gonna give you some information and then open up the public comment period. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Council Member Toombs. Um, I'm Bob Mendez. I'm one of the at-large council members and chair of the stadium's East Bank Stadium Committee. Um, we're going to have a, a presentation that's um, made up of slides that the, our committee has gathered from other presenters. Uh, it's going to be about 15 minutes, and then we're going to open up to comments. Um, and I've got a trusty assistant in the back to help me with the slides. Um, so. The purpose of the committee um, is to lead the council's effort to gather information for the public and council members about this $2 billion proposed um, stadium deal. Um, we decided that our um, committee is not going to take a vote on the proposal one way or the other because we wanted committee members to be focused on gathering information um, for the council and the public. We've conducted so far I think around 10 meetings, um, maybe a little bit more since um, uh, early July. And we are in the midst of these five listening sessions around the county. Um, we've done two of them. This is the third. We've got two more to go. The ground rules are that I'm going to do the presentation um, and then we're going to um, invite people up to come to the microphone. We're going to have a three minute time limit. Um, that's worked in the other two meetings. It looks like based on the number of people here, we'll be able to um, hear everybody out. Um, we're asking everybody to stick to the three minute time limit. Um, we're not going to do Q&A today um, because we want to focus on hearing from everybody who's here. Um, this QR code that's up on the screen will take you to the web page that we've created for the committee that I think is um, the most comprehensive set of information that's ever been gathered for an economic development proposal in Nashville. It has all the materials, um, uh, leases, documents, legislation from the original stadium in the 90s. It's got every presentation that's been made to the committee. Um, it's got videos of all the meetings. Um, it's got an extensive 40 page set of Q&A where council members have submitted questions and the um, administration has answered. So that's your go-to place for digging around for anything you might want to know. Also, I think uh, everybody here would know, feel free to email me, um, uh, bob.mendez at nashville.gov or any of the council members or all the council members about how you feel about this. Um, so again, the slides I'm going to go through are all things we've collected from um, our uh, the presentations we've received before. And my job today is to um, give a basically a book report about what the committee has learned so far. Uh, people who are very much in favor of the stadium will think that I'm not um, uh, positive enough about the presentation. People who are dead set against it are going to think I'm not being critical enough. But the idea here is to give you the information that we've gathered so far. On each slide at the bottom, and you can get this presentation out online at that QR code, there is a link to the full presentation that we received if you want to learn more about a particular slide. So um, well, let's start with the current stadium lease. Um, the most important, and you, anybody who's followed this in the media knows there's a great deal of debate about what's required under the existing lease. And I think what we've learned in the committee is there's three numbers um, that you need to know about. Um, what's the minimum the city would have to do to renovate um, the stadium? What's uh, what would a really nice renovation be like and what would it cost to build new? And I think all of us in our own lives, whether it's uh, um, looking at uh, 
trying to repair a used car or doing a renovation at the house or trying to fix something in your house. These are the things we look at. What's the least I have to do? What would a really nice fix up be? And what does it cost to buy something new? That's basically what we're needing to do um, with the stadium. And for each one of those things, um, we need to look at what the cost is and where the money comes from. So um, on the next slide, we have, um, uh, this is a presentation from the council director, our lawyer, um, that got into um, what the heck do we owe under the current lease? And the dispute, the fighting, the disagreement, the opinions all center around what does it mean to provide a first class condition to the stadium? That's what we're obligated to do, to provide a first class condition for the stadium. And that's defined um, as the kind of improvements that you would find at a reasonable number of comparable facilities. Reasonable number isn't defined, but comparable facilities is. And on the next slide, we see that comparable facilities is defined as any stadiums built 10 years before or 10 years after Nissan Stadium opened. So that includes stadiums built basically from 1989 to 2009. And in that group, there's some really awesome stadiums like the Cowboy Stadium um, down in Dallas. And then there's some that are been torn down right now. And so the key thing I think council members are trying to focus on, it doesn't require us to match the nicest stadium built during that time period. It requires us to meet the conditions that are at a reasonable number of these comparable facilities. That still leaves plenty of room to argue, um, but that's what the obligation is. The other thing you need to know about the lease is that certain rights to develop the parking lots around the stadium into um, other uh, developments with uh, buildings that either people could live or there could be shops for. During the lease, the Titans have had certain limited development rights. Obviously, there's still parking lots. Obviously, the team hasn't exercised those rights. But during this time period, the team has had the theoretical ability um, to uh, develop certain of the parking lots. They haven't done so, but they've had that right. Okay, so again, um, minimum we need to do What's a really nice renovation and new? So let's start with renovating. We wanna look at um, both the cost and the source of funds to do a renovation. Um, and one thing we've learned, um, and you can, you can Google to find searches ab about this if you want, the most expensive renovation of a football stadium up until now in other cities has been in the range of 500 to $600 million. That doesn't mean that's what it costs to renovate Nissan, but just as a data point, when stadiums have been renovated, the most expensive to date has been around five, $600 million to renovate. Um, the next slide talks about What's the absolute minimum? How do we figure, how do we get a sense of what the absolute minimum is? And this is information from the Sports Authority. We know that five years ago, the Sports Authority hired a consultant that said that there was $293 million worth of work that needed to be done to the stadium um, that didn't include um, the things that are on the next slide. Um, it didn't include uh, architectural fees, taxes, insurance, um, some other things. So we know at a minimum, according to a study done five years ago, is the number 293 million. I've been rounding it to 300. 293, 300, somewhere in there is, we know for sure it's definitely not lower than that to um, provide first class condition. Um, and when you couple in the, uh, the most expensive ones have been five for $600 million, somewhere in there pegs the low end of what it could be. At the high end of what a really nice renovation would be um, on the next, oh, there we go. Um, we heard from the Titans in a presentation to the sports authority back in May that the total um, of a really nice renovation would be about $1.8 billion. And that got broken into two numbers, um, 945 million in the near term. And then through the remainder of the lease through the late 30s, another um, 894 million for a total of 1.8 billion. I think um, while this number was thrown out in May as the cost of, um, of first class condition, I think we've conclusively determined that, that the 1.8 would be more than 
what we're minimally required to do under the lease. That would be a renovation that had a, a covered rooftop um, that it would have a three-story sports bar built basically on the outside of the stadium. And so we've got it bookended where five years ago, there's these numbers around 300. We know other stadiums have been five to 600. We know the super duper nice renovation is 1.8 billion. There's still a, a massive amount of room for disagreement. And the fact of the matter is that in the Metro Council, we have people who some people will still stick with the 1.8 billion number. Um, some guesstimate 500 million, others have guesstimated around 1.2, 1.3 billion. Even with all the information we've been given, there's a, a, a great deal of disagreement among council members about what it really costs to provide a first class condition under the terms of the lease. Um, all right. the. Other thing before I move on from the renovation um, that people need to understand, because the, the mayor's office has made a lot of this, um, they point out that for a renovation, um, and I, I'm sorry, this gets technical, but it, we, we need to talk about it, um, that a renovation would be mostly paid for with what's called general obligation bonds. That's about half property taxes, some sales tax, and some other things. And so the mayor's office, pitches that right now to do a renovation, it's heavily reliant on property taxes to pay that, whereas doing something new would shift away from property taxes and towards sales tax and hotel taxes. Um, and again, people have different opinions about whether it matters to shift from one kind of public tax dollar to another kind of public tax dollar, um, but, but definitely a lot of, um, uh, people in favor of the stadium um, push on the idea that a renovation would be heavy on property tax, not entirely, about 50%, um, heavily on property tax, and a new stadium would move more towards sales tax and hotel tax. So let's talk about um, what's the proposal for the new stadium. Um, it's come up uh, at one of our other meetings about TSU, um, and uh, just to knock that out, it's clear um, under the term sheet, the non-binding term sheet that we've got before us is that TSU would have the same rights to use a new stadium that they've got for the current stadium and that they're um, definitely included. Um, and so I got that question. Um, so I'm being sure to mention that. So the new stadium um, would have a total price tag of these numbers add up to um, $2.1 billion. This slide is from a mayor's office presentation. Um, the information is from them. Um, I think you can read it well enough to see at the top, 840 million comes from the team um, and then 500 from the state, which is uh, state tax dollars. And then 760 um, would be sports authority bonds, which would be local and state tax dollars combined there. So the total tax dollars are those two lines of the 500 and the 760. And then the last couple bullet points, there's about um, $60 million worth of obligations that the city has now that would go away um, if the $2 billion stadium was built. And that's another one where some people get really excited about the fact that $60 million worth of liability goes away. Some people think, yeah, I bet it goes away. We build a $2 billion stadium. Like, surely we don't have to pay that too. Um, and so different people feel differently about that. The development rights I mentioned earlier that the Titans have had and haven't used. Um, under the proposed stadium deal, um, those unused development rights would come back to the city and the city would have the right to develop land immediately around the stadium. Um, okay, so the next slide um, talks about um, what gets used to pay all that money, the, the city revenue bonds at 760 million. Um, what, it, what, how do we pay for that? Um, and this is a list of what it would be. The um, first one listed is a new additional 1% of hotel occupancy tax. And so anybody who rents a hotel, whether it's uh, uh, somebody who's uh, doing a month by month here in town or a visitor from out of town would pay an extra 1% on the hotel tax anywhere in the county. Um, that is only available to the city um, if 
a new domed stadium is built. The state law that lets us charge that extra 1% is clear that it's only available um, if we uh, do a, a covered stadium. Um, next, 100% um, of the state and local sales tax from inside the stadium would go to pay the bonds. And then um, half the sales tax from about 130 acres around the stadium would also be captured. Um, and a lot of you may know that for like the convention center downtown, there's a what I call a capture zone that's pretty large where uh, a chunk of sales tax from a pretty large area gets caught up to help pay for the convention center. This would create a 130 acre capture zone around the stadium that would, uh, half of the sales tax would be used to um, pay for the bonds. Um, and then the last couple items are, there's a current um, $3 ticket tax for every Titans game and a $3 charge would be added um, per ticket for every um, non-football event and that would help pay for it. Um, on the uh, football re related funding sources, so this is the 840 million that the team's gonna come up with. Um, there's a list of um, things here and if you hit next, um, uh, we don't know the exact breakdown. And some people argue, we don't need to know how the team comes up with 840 million. Other people are interested in what percent of it is borrowing, what percent is their own money. And especially season ticket holders are very interested to know how much of it is uh, new uh, personal seat license sales. Um, but that's we, we don't know that at this time. And again, um, some people argue that we don't need to. Let me, before I go off of this, um, the, um, the 500 million from the state on the previous page I meant to mention is also only available if we um, build a covered stadium. So there's two chunks of money that the state will allow um, that they're, they're telling us how they want it to go in order to get it. Um, okay, so going to the next slide. Um, one of the things that is critical to understand is um, unlike any stadium deal in the last 25 years, this deal is not just about uh, construction and paying for construction. This deal is about paying for construction and then continuing to capture a large amount of tax money to pay for future improvements for the new stadium for decades to come. And to build a 20 acre, what's being called stadium village immediately next to the stadium and to pay for the infrastructure in the hundred or so acres around the football stadium. And so unlike um, so like with the convention center, a lot of the debate was, are the is the revenue gonna be enough to pay for the stadium? And here with this foot, with, with enough to pay for the convention center. With the stadium, it's sort of a flip side question. It's how how much more than just the construction cost is going to be captured. And, um, and, and you'll see on this as he hits next that um, there are several numbers here that, that we don't know right now. And again, I'll, I'll portray both sides of it. Um, some folks say, well, it's premature to know yeah, we'll figure it out before you guys have to approve final legislation in a few months. Others say, like, we need to know um, what the numbers are. And in particular, the third one down, the Capital Repair Reserve Fund, um, the most, the only detail we have about that is that it's going to, um, it's expected to capture into the hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't know how many hundreds of millions, but that's from a statement from um, a deputy mayor um, uh, at, at one of our committee meetings. We know that that'll be hundreds of millions of dollars. And again, um, some folks uh, say, we don't need to know that right now. Some people say, eh, can we at least know how many hundreds of millions of dollars of tax money it'll capture? Um, all right, um, so that's the financing. I'll do a little bit about the design. Um, this next image is um, from the planning department and it's not meant to be perfect. It's supposed to be a representation of what the East Bank might look like. Um, and, and for those of you who are familiar with the area, um, the what's now the big scrap yard is, is showed as roads here. So this is definitely a vision of the future. It's not meant to be an accurate map. You'll see that the idea is to set the stadium 
um, farther back from uh, the river than the current stadium is. And um, to have um, developments, buildings and some park area in uh, the area around there. Um, sorry, somebody from the team is texting me about things I'm saying. Um, uh, um, I got distracted, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is an image from the planning department about what might look like. Um, and, and if you guys go online, you can get the full presentation by following the link down in the corner. Um, the next four images are from the team's architects about um, what it could look like. This is a um, nighttime shot. You can see off to the side here, um, what some of the development would be on the side. You can see the scale is intended to probably be taller than the football stadium. Uh, and we've been told by the architect that the idea is to not have the stadium hovering over the neighborhood, but to have it try to fit into the neighborhood. Um, the next slide shows some of the outdoor um, spaces, the, the public spaces that the um, team is uh, trying to build in. The team... Um, uh, talks a lot um, about trying to make sure there's public spaces so everybody can enjoy um, and take advantage. And it can be true community space rather than just a place where um, folks go 10 times a year for football games. Um, the next slide shows an interior shot. And the one after that um, shows what it might look like for concerts. Um, the architects told us that the idea is to try to have a couple different um, setups uh, for different size concerts. And this is just uh, one representation of what it might look like. Um, in addition to the monetary things, trying to understand what it means in terms of tax dollars for the city, there's two other topics um, we've, we've uh heard about and and we heard the committee heard different viewpoints and and really for this i would encourage y'all to get this presentation from online click on the links and see the full presentation because i don't have time to go through all the details this evening we want to hear from you um, but uh, one topic is community benefits. The team gave us a presentation about um, what they are calling their community benefits platform. I think anybody who's been here for the last 20 years would say the Titans um, have been present in the community and involved. And with their community benefits platform, um, they're uh, uh, trying to, sh and, they, and they've told us they're gonna do the community benefits platform, whether there's a new stadium or not, but they've outlined a long list of uh, things they've worked out, agreements they've worked out with some of, um, a lot of nonprofits in Nashville that you all know by name um, to, um, to get even more involved in the community. In addition to listening to the team about that, we had a panel of three folks from community advocate associate organizations to talk to us about community benefits agreements and um, their uh, critique of the Titans plan is that they're worried about transparency and the enforceability of the promises being made by um, the team in their platform. And again, I would encourage you all to find these presentations um, online and check out the videos and, and you can decide for yourself about how you feel about the, the level of community benefits. And then we also um, had two presentations about the overall economic benefits of the entire community. We heard from um, Butch Spearden from the Nashville Convention and Visitors um, Corporation, and he um, gave us a, a series of slides like this one where there were um, quotes and um, uh, comments from all sorts of organizations like the NFL and World, Wrestle, World WWE um, talking about what a, what a difference it would make to have a, an enclosed stadium to them and that they bring more events to town. On the other side of the coin, we heard from an a academic economist um, who believes that um, public investment in stadiums does not provide a return to taxpayers. And this is another one where people feel different ways and I'm just giving a book report. Um, I encourage y'all to look at the presentations and, and you guys can decide for yourselves um, how you feel about this. Um, and, I, and the videos are helpful too. So with that, um, I'm gonna put that QR code back up so you can get the link to the um, committee work. Uh, again, the ground rules are gonna be um, that we're gonna have folks come up 
to the podium here. Um, it's going to be three minutes um, per person. We're not doing Q and A um, because we want to hear from y'all, and uh, and we've got plenty of information online. If there's something you can't find online, please feel free to email any of us or all of us, um, and we'll get you the answer. Um, I've got a little. When you got when you've got thirty seconds left, I'm going to give you a yellow and. I guess pink it will do for red when you're out of time. Um, and uh, um, I appreciate y'all coming out tonight. And we're just going to ask you to come up a couple, two, three at a time. And uh, and we'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Thanks, everybody. Um, and I think, is that mic on, guys? Yeah, the mic is on. So uh, whoever would like to be first and break the ice, come on up. I have a one minute statement here. I'm Carl Meyer from Nashville Greenlands, a network of 10 houses in North Nashville that were vacant and in poor condition, some of them demolition ready, uh, before our homeowners bought them and restored them for affordable housing without any public subsidies over the last 25 years. I totally will agree with any others here who say that tax revenues and public debt obligations should not be used to subsidize billionaire corporations and sports team owners to entice them to, entice them to come here fueling overly explosive growth of our city that we do not need. The owners and the fans who can afford super high price tickets should pay the whole cost for their own facilities. If they can't afford to do that and can get better deals somewhere else, let them go there. Right. Our mayors our mayors should stop making all of these pre-cooked secretive deals and our Metro Council members should stand up, vote no, and stop enabling billionaire corporation subsidy deals. Now I added something to this, I added it myself after thinking about it. Maybe don't say no, maybe you can't say no on this particular stadium deal because of the very costly financial trap that the Houston Oiler owners and Mayor Bredesen baked into the original stadium deal 27 years ago. But let's have no more of these sweetheart deals with super wealthy investors. Metro tax revenues and debt obligations should be used to leverage affordable housing for every and all family and underpaid workers and people with disabilities and people who are homeless and to pay for the education, the transportation, and all the other infrastructure needs to fully keep pace with the much with a much slower and wiser rate of growth in our city. Good evening, uh, Steve Ryder. It's hard to follow Carl Meyer. Uh, Carl's been active in this community longer than probably anybody in this room, and uh, he calls it the way he sees it. So thanks for being here. I think he's up there in his 80s now, so it's good to see him alive and kicking. Um, my problem with this is that this is really a package deal. This is not just a stadium. This is the whole East Bank. And so when we look at everything here, that is my big problem, is that we're just looking at the stadium. If you look at, we're redirecting all this sales tax revenue, and probably there's gonna be a redevelopment district there, so they're gonna use TIF financing or something, so we're not gonna get the property tax revenue. Since we don't have any income tax here, who's gonna pay for that? 
It's going to be the people who are already here that are going to say, we're going to be subsidizing this new neighborhood. And I'm not for that. I'm just not. And there's been a lack of transparency. I don't know what MDHA's role is in this, but I do think they're going to play a part in it. Now, I'm all for affordable housing. I'm for some extremely low-income housing, not too far away from here. We have Cumberland View. Uh, there are people who are struggling to live in the city anymore, especially extremely low-income people. Right. And when you look around and say, oh, they don't want it, not in my neighborhood or whatever else, in North Nashville, you'll find people around TSU that say, we'll support it because we believe in it. So um, I would ask you to be to step back a little bit, ask the mayor's office to be more transparent. I think Sam Wilton is their contact person in the mayor's office. He needs to talk to the Titans and come forward and talk with MDHA so we can see the totality of what is being proposed. Not just this little stadium thing, because it's more than that. And we all know that, but they're not telling us. So with that, thank you so much. I'm gonna let other people speak. Have a great night. Thanks. Give me, give me one second. I'm gonna, we're gonna rearrange the timing here. So that's your timer person. No. Hi, I'm Kyle Cook, uh, Meadowcrest Lane District 24, member SEIU local. Mayor Cooper says we don't need another study. He's right, we don't. We have a complete study in the drawer from 2017. Please get an updated cost estimate on the 49 recommended fixes that are mentioned there. VSG says their 2017 survey is a living document. It's intended to be updated. Another qualified firm can pick up that study and update it and get us more accurate figures. It would not require another complete analysis of Nissan Stadium. That 160 page document describes what is needed to update all the major systems to bring the stadium up to date for the next 20 years. The VSG 2017 estimate for council said it would take 293 million to update the stadium. Inflation only gives you 60 million, meaning in the renovation budget, anything over 360 million is icing on the cake. Nashville is not required to pay for that icing. 293 million is still the most expensive stadium renovation ever. It's 75 million more than a comparable New England Patriots stadium underway right now. I do not believe a first class 23 year old stadium requires what is described in a newer Gensler Hastings renderings of Nissan Stadium. They want to put the Taj Mahal on top of Nissan Stadium and we don't have to pay for it. I don't believe that it would, should require an adjacent massive three story sports bar it calls the ultimate sports bettors dream. A second private sports betting parlor for high rollers called the Foolish Club which I'll remind you are illegal in Tennessee. A songwriter's cafe with theater boxes, rebuilding East Upper Deck with an urban rooftop garden, trees and bars, rebuilding the West Upper Deck with a plaza and a hundred yard rooftop canopy in the shape of Tennessee. A field club level space that looks like the lobby of the Hermitage Hotel. In Metro Oak, we have a project that's anything over $2,500. We have to get three bids. This thing, we only have one bid. Why for a multi-million dollar project do we not have an itemized proposal for more than one contractor? I am skeptical of the dome stadium financing. The overall plan is to shift the stadium cost tax burden away from property tax to sales tax and hotel, hotel tax. And this is regressive. It penalizes working families who pay for sales tax and state sales tax and the hotel tax. It shifts money from our community into the pockets of wealthy elites and their tax deductible luxury boxes. The Imagine East Bank vision plan identifies priority for this neighborhood as affordable housing, multimodal transportation network, Cumberland River transportation, outdoor green space and recreation, museums and cultural festival spaces. That's great, but none of those things generate significant sales tax rev revenue. More likely any commerce that occurs in this area, it just moved from existing local businesses. And don't forget, Major League Baseball wants to build a team next year in the next 20 years. So please make it a year-round multi-sport stadium instead of spending this dome in another ballpark later. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Rashad. Hi, my name is Rashad Pakrud, and I don't have any speech. Uh, I live, eat, drink uh, sports and football. Been a uh, Titans ticket holder. A founding member since they moved here as a young professional and became uh, became a registered voter for the first time. Voted for many of y'all because 
of NFLES in 1996. So I'm grateful for what the Titans have brought. Um, and I'm really excited about this uh, stadium and really excited, grateful that the Titans did have focus groups and conversations like these are taking place so you can get feedback and not to take away those who preceded me had very valid points and they're very important when it comes to tax revenue, uh, affordable housing, those are real issues. But uh, as an NFL fan for the last five decades, uh, it's so beautiful watching the Titans and seeing this growth. We were at SoFi Stadium and I'd love to see our stadium at that level, not that big, don't wanna waste money. But from, a, from wearing many hats in the community, uh, I'm really, uh, more interested in the community aspect and that development outside the stadium. Uh, I, I chair the advisory board for Pearl Cone through NES, my engagement there, mentor kids. And I'd like to even see, I'm grateful what the Titans have been doing with the community. And I want to see it continue stepping up. I know Pearl Cone's in the backyard of the uh, Titans practice facility, East Magnet backyard of the, of the Titans stadium. And so anything that can be done to step up that engagement and how these metro schools where we have 70% living in free and reduced lunch or, you know, basically under the poverty level, I want to see where the Titans can play even a bigger role in the development of our kids and our community. But uh, with all that said, uh, very grateful for these type of conversations that I don't think have been around in the early days of the Titans. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good call. Hello, my name is Nicole Carpenter. I live at 545 Great Circle Road, right across the street from here at Metro Center. Um, Nashville's vibrant sports and the big event scene is one of the key things that brought me to move here when I was in my 20s. Um, I'm excited for this new stadium and all the opportunities that it holds. Having an enclosed stadium is a huge opportunity for Nashville and all the events that we can bring here. Um, like mentioned in the presentation, from the draft to a Super Bowl, all the exciting things and all the visitors that it can also bring. The status quo keeps the burden on us, Nashville taxpayers. The new st stadium deal, um, it makes sense to me. I've read many of the documents that are on your website, looked at all the things, read listened to the different hearings, and it does make sense in terms of what the offering versus the renovations. I support the stadium project, and I ask that you please vote and support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katie Baker, and I live in the Nations. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys tonight about um, the stadium, obviously. I am a huge supporter of the stadium. I have uh, been to Nashville many times. I live here now, grew up coming here with my family attending events in Nissan Stadium. And those are lifelong memories that I have as a young child. Um, and so with this new stadium, this would allow generations of people, not only in here in Nashville, but around the world to come to Nashville and experience Nashville in the way that we all love this city. This stadium would be an amazing addition to uh, growing the culture that we have in the city. Um, so I just ask that you please vote yes in support of the stadium. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michael Carter. I'm the managing partner for Pinnacle Construction Partners, which is a commercial construction firm that's been around since 2007. It was started by me and my former deceased partner or my deceased partner, Daryl Freeman, who I'm sure most of you, if not all of you know who he is. I speak to you from the standpoint of an economic issue because I was part of the soccer stadium. My company was, or our company was. And some of the issues that are being brought up, some of the conversations that are taking place concern me mightily because at the end of the day, regardless of the stance in which you take, let's make sure that in fact you have all the facts. I've had an opportunity to hear a number of presentations from the mayor, from the the Titans. From what I've been told, this doesn't cost national taxpayers a dime. That the revenue is coming from, again, people that come here and travel from outside. So again, what are the facts? We need to be concerned about that. When we built that soccer stadium, $74 million went to folks of color and women. That made tuition bills, 
that put food on the table for our community because the folks that were doing the work at the soccer stadium were people from our community. 90% of it. The workforce piece, almost 50% of the thousands of people that worked at, the, at that stadium were women and people of color. So again, from my standpoint, from my economic standpoint, this is good for the city. It's material in terms of the kind of monies that are going to come back and flow into the pockets of painters and carpenters and plumbers who look like all of us here in this, in this audience. So again, it's important that our voices be heard. And I respect people who are in opposition to maybe the position I take. But at the same time, let's not be short-sighted. Let's make sure we're making good business decisions, city council people. And let's do what's best for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. My name is Don Harden with Don Harden Group. A bit about us, we've been in Nashville for 22 years now as a business. Uh, on the Music City Center project, we assured 30% went to diverse businesses. On the, music, on the uh, project at Meharry, the Turner Family Center, we assured that 44% went to minority and women-owned businesses. On the National Museum of African American Music, we, assured, we were able to expand 75% or more on minority and women-owned businesses. The Titans asked us to help them in setting expectations with their diversity, equity, and inclusion program as it relates to this project. After a long discussion with Burton Hill, the CEO, we determined it was best to evaluate how the Titans actually go about their processes for hiring vendors. We also discussed ways the Titans could help expand on the things that they're already doing in the community. He emphasized hiring Jahari Matthews and giving her the autonomy to create what we know now as an effective one community program. This level of involvement in several facets has, has not been done in Nashville in this way to involve multiple different things. So we're, we're excited about that. There will be meaningful opportunities during the design and construction of these projects. We know that it can be done. We've proven that with other projects. And it will set the stage to make sure that, well, it's up to us after that to make sure that there will be a livable wage for those who will work on these, will work on the operation of these projects. It's been done before. That's been done before. In 2010, I was around when there was similar voting, similar discussions like this about the Music City Center and whether it would benefit the city. Not only has it generated surplus revenue that uh, Bob Mendez explained how, you know, it could be used for certain things, but it's created numerous jobs for people in our community. The late Francis Guest made sure of that. That was a point that he said, hey, majority, of, you know, people from the community, black folks should work on this project. Women should work on this project. Not just a project, but they actually work there at the Music City Center. We have similar opportunities with the Titan Stadium and the East Bank Project. The financial plan is prudent. It's been, if you really are listening to it and paying attention, you want to believe in it, it's there. You can ask the questions, but the details are there. Uh, that's all of my time, but I'll say that the cost estimates uh, that are coming from uh, is coming from more than one source on the project, and they're proof. I know that I see the numbers. I know these numbers are right, and there's room for escalation and all these other things. So, so like Michael said, you should, you should know the facts. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tamika White. I am a neighbor of the Titans as well as a community organizer. And tonight I'm here representative as a staff of the Equity Alliance. My question is, in order for the stadium's new financing to work, taxes will need to be captured from a neighborhood that does not exist. How will we know what we're paying for if you don't know? How much will it cost for taxpayers to build this new neighborhood that's imaginary? And without being a community organizer, I wouldn't have these. There are people who couldn't be here tonight. So we took the liberty of doing a survey and asking them, is there something that they want to say on behalf of being a neighbor in this area? So Miss Miss Belinda is a resident in Miss Nancy Van Reese's district. She said, hey, Tamika, thanks for reaching out to me. But Miss Nancy knows how I feel. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Teachers, 
need to be paid. Our homeless need to be taken care of. Our streets need to be repaved. No new stadium if we can't take care of the things that we have already. Mr. Eric Jones said, I can't be there today. I have to take care of my sick kids, but I don't want a new stadium. Please vote no. Somebody texts back, I won't say his name because he cursed, but he said, H no. Miss Cynthia said, no new stadium. Please tell my loving council members to vote no. Just a few more, my three minutes not up yet. Ms. Johnson, which is a representative in your district, Mr. Taylor, who decided that these community organizations will be a part of this platform? Mr. Matt, who is a, rep a resident in Mr. Sean Parker's neighborhood, he said, what does this plan do for residents, if anything, other than to bring large sports events? How many people from here are actually going to attend? How many people can afford it? I work, I make good money, and I can afford to take my family of five to the Titans games. Are people going to like what this looks like in 40 years? Will it be easy to walk, play, or start a business in that area that they say will ex exist outside of the stadium? How will it incorporate the history of that area? Ms. Pat, who is in, let's see, sorry. She's in Hermitage. What percentage of the Titans season ticket holders actually live in Nashville? Because they seem to be the only ones who want this. Thank y'all. Thanks. Good evening, Chairman Mendes and members of the committee. My name is Lolita Tony, and I'm the Executive Director of Development for Tennessee State University. I am here to express Tennessee State University's support of the construction of a new covered stadium on the east bank of the Cumberland River. As you know, Tennessee State University and the Tennessee Titans have relationships extending over 25 years. The ties between the big blue and the two-tone blue are deep and strong. Some of those ties are well known. Former Heisman Trophy winner and Titans great Eddie George leading the TSU Tigers football team as head coach and esteemed alum Don Harden who is working on the project. And another tie is Tennessee State University's participation in the Titans One Community Program. One Community seeks to have an impact on underserved segments of Nashville in three areas, opportunity, neighborhoods, and education. TSU is one of 16 local organizations taking part in one community as part of the Titans Historic Community Benefits Program. Under one community, the Titans will not only be supporting TSU athletics, but providing direct support to the broader student community by providing scholarships, job shadowing, professional development to our alumni and staff, and perhaps most importantly to our students, employment opportunities. Beyond just the relationship between the Titans and TSU, the new stadium presents a real opportunity for our university. TSU, as you may have read, is experiencing very real enrollment growth. As the only four-year land-grant institution HBCU in Tennessee and the largest employer in North Nashville, we view the new stadium as a venue capable of showcasing TSU's excellence across a whole range of programs. The Titans are a presenting sponsor of the John Barry Classic, and we see its economic impact on Nashville's growth growing with the new stadium. As our enrollment grows, we anticipate growth and success for our athletic programs, as well as the new stadium will play a role in that. And I can't think of a more appropriate venue to showcase TSU's Grammy-nominated aristocrat of bands. President Glover has asked me to convey to you her strong support for the new stadium. And as a community of scholars committed to Nashville, Tennessee State University urges the Metro Council to allow the proposed East Bank Stadium to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good evening. 
Evening. I won't be here long. And before I get started, if you drive a silver Lexus, your lights are on. It's a cold night to be jumping your car. Um, number one, if we do, I'm Randy, born and raised, Bordeaux, Bordeaux vested. Um, if we do go forward with the um, new stadium or renovation, either one, we need to take a look at the three dollar um, ticket. Um, charge because three dollars won't be the same in the future so we need to change that to a percentage versus just a simple dollar amount um if we are going to do a renovation or well we have to do a renovation or a new stadium one of the two uh, i think that it does need to have a roof uh, so we do have that flexibility of hosting things year round and generating revenue from that um, if we do go with a new stadium i think we need to look more at having a certain percentage of the funds go to funding districts away from downtown uh, that way it's not just promised it's actually in the structure such as the charter has four percent funds that have to be set aside xyz uh, we need to do the same with this deal uh, that way uh, it's not just centered on the center everybody around actually gets it and it's written also, we need to make sure we do a, in a roof also for um, disaster preparedness. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Diamond. Um, I'm a community organizer, so I'm here speaking on behalf of that. I just want to say I'm against the stadium simply because I feel that we've all been here listening to the same thing of like affordable housing, education, um, unpaid teachers. So I just feel that the same time and energy that's been put into this stadium is like a well thought out um, strategic plan. Um, I just feel like that could be another well thought out plan for those those problems that we've been screaming for for so long. Um, I do want to say that I understand that it's not the Titans' responsibility to swoop in and fix any of these things. Um, so I do want to say that I expect our leaders, council members, mayor to to listen to us. That's what these meetings are for, for us to come out, the community, to say what they feel and expect for y'all to take it into consideration seriously. Um, and so hopefully that's what happens. I want to see those things get taken into consideration first before we have this substantial amount of money on a new stadium. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. First, I want to say thank you, council members, for being here and giving us the opportunity to speak. In February of 2020, about 100 residents gathered at Northwest YMCA to share our thoughts on the proposed property tax increases. WPLN ran a story and noted that most North Nashvilleans were residents were okay with the property tax increase, but they wanted to ensure that it benefited them. I was at that meeting and I heard residents ask for improved response times for emergency responders, sidewalks, and raises for MNPS support staff, among other things. CM Mendez and CM Toombs, y'all headed up that meeting and y'all led the effort to listen to community members. And I want to thank you for that. CM Toombs, you were quoted as saying, folks, they want the receipts. They want to see how it's going to benefit their community. They don't want to see the same old thing. They want to see, they want, they don't want to have infrastructure. They where they don't have the infrastructure, don't have the basics in their community, yet they are paying the same taxes as everyone else. The same is still true. While the Titans ask us for $1.2 billion of taxpayer money, in addition to the billions of dollars that would be required to build the East Bank neighborhood infrastructure to fund the capture zones and the ta tax redirects, we in North Nashville and Bordeaux squabble over $2 million in the participatory budget. <laughs> More than 400 items have been submitted by residents in this very community where we sit to fund traffic calming, maintenance at our community centers, playgrounds, and pavilions to shade our children. And what I'm trying to say is this, those that believe funding for the new Titan Stadium will somehow manifest into improved neighborhoods and quality of life for all now civilians are mistaken. Trickle-down economics hasn't worked for the rest of Nashville for the past 20 years since the Titans arrived, even though the Titans team valuation grew from $551 million to $3.5 billion. And I think it's safe to say that trickle-down economics don't want work for the rest of Nashville, particularly Bordeaux, North Nashville, and Southeast with this new deal either. 
It benefits the existing power structure, the developers, the construction companies, the team owners, and those that have aligned to support them. I am so grateful that that gentleman from, from Pinnacle spoke about the soccer stadium. The soccer stadium was negotiated with the CBA that was negotiated by Stand Up Nashville. That's why we had, that's why we had a minimum wage. That's why we're getting daycare. That's why we're getting affordable housing because Stand Up Nashville negotiated a transparent community of benefits agreement. We don't have that here. Finally, I'd like to ask you all to slow down. The Titans state that, that they have been working with community groups for two years, yet we as citizens and U.S. council members have only had a first glimpse of the financial renderings and term sheets in the last six weeks. Currently, the fairgrounds and the LPR are currently being legislated. These are important moral matters that will impact the fabric and the future of our city, and these discussions are being held during the holidays. The speed at which we as residents and as U.S. council members are being forced to make these decisions it feels like we're being rushed to make uninformed decisions. And that feels undemocratic. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you all council members for being here and holding this meeting. And thank you to everyone that spoke today. Um, I don't have anything to add to the numbers and the statistics that so many brilliant people uh, brought up before me. I just felt um, I just felt compelled to speak because I, I was born and raised here. I graduated in 97, Hume Fogg, left to pursue an international career and moved back in 2018. And I have one question since I moved back that is kind of breaking my heart. And I might cry about it. But who is this city for today? Who is it for? Because the one I left in 97 was for me. And for everybody else that was living a middle class life and trying to grow and learn and grow that middle class life. Middle class people can't live in this city anymore. And we don't need a dome stadium. We need transportation and healthcare and education. So my question is please, please, as those that are leading and responsible to this city, because what we're building today is a city we will not recognize in 10 years or 20 years. And I don't mean in terms of the, the, the skyline. I mean in terms of the inhabitants, the culture. This is a warm, loving, look at the, everybody showed up. We care about community here. We care about it. And I, I don't want that to be replaced. So that's all I'm asking is please be stewards of that. 10 years from now, what's going to happen 20 years from now? And the second thing is, I, we could get into the economics, but I just want to say the, the black and brown people and the women that are going to be employed, I want to know how much they're making an hour and for how long. That is completely bullets. It costs so much to live in this city. So some little six month or eight month project where I get $15 an hour is not sufficient. Right. We need a long term economic development program for the people. Yeah. Sorry and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm Ray Cohane. Uh, I know all of you. Um, I'm very much against this, but I am principally against all stadiums being taxpayer paid for. All stadiums. Because if you ask any economic person, any economist with any kind of salt in their uh, um, personalities, they will tell you that these never, never benefit the people who live in the city that you're building it in. And we need, I, I mean, I agree with those last two people. We need so much more in this city other than a domed stadium. Uh, we need affordable housing. And it, the other thing that bothers me about this stadium is they're building it smaller than the stadium that they currently have. What is the whole point of that? <laughs> and the other thing that bothers me about this is when you make these, these deals with the tax money staying with the particular area, well, that doesn't benefit Hermitage, that doesn't benefit my neighborhood, that doesn't benefit anybody, anybody else in the city. So when you say that it's not costing the taxpayers really, it really is. It really is costing all the people in Nashville because they're not getting the benefit of those tax dollars anymore. 
I, I'm totally against this. I, I think it's a bad thing. Y you are making a city that is going to be unrecognizable in 10 years. And uh, I'm going to be out of here because I'm leaving by the end of next year. I can't, I can't take the way the city is being run. And I can't pay any more uh, of the fees that I have to pay to live here. It, it's unaffordable for me at this point on a fixed income. I can't do it. So I'll be out of here by the end of 23. You will never see another email from me. Uh, however, I would like to see this. And I don't have one of those phones. Do you have a website that I can go to? I'll announce it at the end. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'll give it to you. Right Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Valentine. I um, wasn't going to speak because I was late today because I um, help run a program, the Napier Community, where we help students who need literacy support and we have a mentoring program. And because one of the young students needs to go to the grandmother's house down the street, I said, well, I actually can't make it. The students I just left in Napier, they need you to vote no. If we can tax the tourists, we can tax the tourists to get a stadium. We can tax the tourists to have paid tutors in a community where literacy for our young people is not even over 20%. If we can tax the tourists to get this nice, lovely stadium, the students that I just left the houses, the apartments they live in. I, I, I have pictures on my phone. Unbearable. Yet, two streets over from Charles E. Davis, there are tall and skinnies, Airbnbs. You know how I know? Because as of two weeks ago, and one of my good friends in Audis, I haven't even told you this yet. I live in Freddie's district. I've been wanting to move in the Napier community for years because I went to Napier Elementary School. I'm a product of MMPS. Napier taught me how to swim. I'm so proud of that. My husband and I in the summer have a part-time kayaking business. We take youth in the neighborhood, go kayaking. But right now that pool's not open. So the youth that I work with, I have to take them out of their community to go swimming. What if we tax the tourists to open that pool up? And it's, it's supposed to already be open because there's money allocated, but it's not. And then we hear, oh, well, we may not have lifeguards. We paid them enough. We taught the students how to, then they would be there. We have to prioritize what is important. Because, yes, we may have jobs if this deal does go through. But unfortunately, many of the students that I work with, the ones I just left, they may not even be able to, to have those jobs. They can barely read. Barely read, and our teachers are underpaid. I can go on and on, you guys know it, but we have to prioritize it. I see day in and day out. People thought it was crazy for moving. Only way I was able to even afford and rent a house is because the landlord was like, I see the work that you do in the community. I hear the gunshots, just like the students do. We need you all to vote no. Make it happen. Thank you. My name's Michael Tucker, a uh, local builder here, uh, lifelong resident. Um, worked on the uh, Nashville Arena project. I've seen projects built here in the city. Um, been a part of a lot of projects here in the city. Um, my question would be, um, what's the pros and cons of renovating? the Titan Stadium versus building a new one. Uh, I think that needs to be looked at very carefully. Um, it can be done. It can be renovated. A roof could be put on it. Um, the Titans, when the tight, uh, when uh, the Oilers came here, uh, I was working with a company, Jones and Jones, who was a part of the construction. But where are all the contractors gone, black contractors? 
I served as president of the Minority Contractors Association for many years. And the question is, when does it start benefiting our community? You, they have taken vocational trades out of the high schools. Um, yes. I took vocational trades. They were at Pearl High School. They were at Whites Creek High School. Our youth need vocational trades in order to get some training, to, to learn how to work with their hands, um, to always have something to fall back on. That's important. Um, I would like to see that inv investigated because, and I'm a product of Tennessee State University. I played football at Tennessee State University. We did engineering studies on expanding the, camp, uh, the football stadium at Tennessee State University. It can be done. We got a short end, the short end of the deal with the Titans. Um, $70 million went to, that could have went to expanding TSU's campus stadium. Yeah. But it went to the Titans stadium. TSU's still getting a bad deal. So where, where will TSU stand as it relates to putting the roof on it, putting the cap on the stadium, or building a new? Where will TSU really stand? Um, it's, that's important. Um, there, you know, there, there were there were conversations with the ownership of, of the Titans. Um, not being here in the city, you know, you look around and you say, "Well, where's the ownership structure of the, tit the Titans?" They were in Houston. Many times, um, they were not present, and it was it was at it was it was pretty uh, visible that they were not. Thank and you. So, where were they? Thank you. Hi, my name is Molly Meinbress. I'm also born and bred in Nashville and Bordeaux, now living in Oak Park area, and I just want to say. Um, the things that have kept me here in Nashville are, are the community, um, the people, the culture, the food, the music, not any sports teams. I didn't grow up going to sports games. I still don't really go to sports games. That's not what keeps me here. That's not what ties me to my community. Um, and what makes me so sad is to, over the years, see this city develop in some good ways, but a lot of not great ways too, leaving a lot of people behind. Um, and a lot of times when we have these big developments, um, people are displaced. Um, and so, yeah, like other people have said and asked, like, who are we, whose lives are we prioritizing? And I don't feel like we're prioritizing people who are very low income, people of color. Um, there's so many communities where schools are doing so poorly, they're closing. Um, and um, what are the graduation rates? What are the incarceration rates? Um, I used to be a homeless outreach um, worker and I helped people find housing. As people have said here, middle-class people can't afford to live here. What about the people who are homeless, literally have nothing? Do you know how hard it is to find them housing? They might have a Section 8 voucher, but is there even a Section 8 unit available for them? And how do they even pay for food? I mean, it's the, it's awful. Um, so. Yeah, why are we prioritizing these multi-million dollar companies? Um, we should prioritize the people who live here now and need our help. Um, so housing, transportation, education, all of that. I wanna make sure we maintain the culture here that has kept a lot of us here um, connected to our communities. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the people who visit and enjoy their time here, but we really need to help the folks who are here now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Janet Parham. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe all of you all know the answer. And if you do, please shout it out. Who builds a house with the acceptance that it, is, it has to be torn down in 20 years, rebuilt, and they float the idea that the renovations are so prohibitive that it seems plausible to build a $2.1 billion stadium. That's foolishness, okay? That is absolutely foolishness. If I build a house, I definitely expect to live in it at least to the end of my lifetime. 
You're not going to build something and then you're going to have to tear it down and build bigger and better barns at a, at a prohibitive cost. And, and I always wanted to know what does it do for Janet? That's me living in North Nashville on Hyman Street. What will it do for me? If I could say that when the Titans came the first time, that you see that light over there? I got that when the Titans came. Mm, you know, if I could say that, then I, was, I probably want to sit down and listen and sort of negotiate this $2.1 billion. But I can't say, of it, say anything. I can't name one thing that I've gotten. And not only me, people on my street, people in my block, people in my neighborhood, people in my community. So those numbers, they get, they get to be so outlandish that it is easy to say 900 and something million dollars, $2.1 billion. That's not, that's not reasonable to most of us. Most of us can't count that much. And so, I, so I'm just saying, I think we need to re redo this. I think we need to rethink this. I think we need to go back to the old landmark and look and see what um, what uh, we need to do to fix the stadium that is already there. And I am also in, in favor of the idea of having more than one person or one company or one organization give us a bid. I'm sure, I am sure we can beat that. You know, we do it all the time. You know, when you're going to have renovations, I just had some renovation at my house. You call it more than one person and then you sit down and see, okay, now, is, is this price too high or is this price too low? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Naima Walker Fierce, um, and I'm I I am the majority owner of Germantown Pub on Monroe and Rosa Parks. I happen to live approximately a mile from here. Uh, but more importantly, I'm a lawyer, so I'm sort of going to speak to you with two hats, right? Three hats, actually. So um, I spent a lot of my childhood here, know the city well, was a summer associate at a big firm, decided not to live here because it, it just wasn't, uh, frankly, a fun city in 1996 when I finished law school. Um, that being said, I started coming back and fell in love with the city I knew as a child, but it had changed. You know, my grandmother's neighbors had chickens, right? Right off of Cleveland Street. And now um, I have approximately 30 employees and some of them make, you know, they make over 30 grand a year working in the kitchen and they can't pay rent. L literally, they can't pay rent. I've probably lost eight people in a year to other states because they can't pay rent, right? I am fortunate and that I practiced law in New York, I did well, I moved here, I realized education here is terrible, so I put my kid in a private school because I can, right? So as a lawyer, as a transplant, I'm super cognizant of how this city grew faster than it was prepared to, right? And frankly, has not had the political, uh, I would say, skills, and hopefully nobody comes after me. But it, does, you know, it, it it's not, it wasn't built politically like a Chicago or New York, right? Where the negotiating on everything, particularly as to people of color and low income people, is front and center, right? So we're we're sort of trying to do that now, and it's it's hard to do. Right, so I'm super aware of that. I think the mo I think this city uh, is broken educationally. I think it's broken for working people. I think it's the, there is no mass transit. Right, so I will tell you all of that is key to me. However, as a lawyer, right, when I put back on my legal hat, we have to get out of this lease. Right, this is a terrible lease. It doesn't matter why it was negotiated. It doesn't matter who signed it. Those of us in this room who pay taxes, our obligation under the existing lease, which goes through 2039, is 1.8 billion, right? Now, we could sue the Titans. We can get into a protracted and expensive lawsuit to figure out how that, to lower that number. But 
irrespective of whether the number is 400 million, 800 million, 2 billion, right? We're on the hook for maintaining the stadium. We are currently on the hook for $30 million in bonds because of this stadium. We were on, we're on the hook $32 million in maintenance that we had to borrow from the Titans, right? This stadium is a piece of shit. Excuse my language, right? So as a lawyer, we have got to get out of this lease, okay? The best way out of this lease, frankly, is through people with money right? Because I work for these people. You know, I was a private equity lawyer. I understand these people, right? So if the, 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 the Titans are willing to sell assets to family to put up money, let them. If the state is willing to give us $500 million for a stadium that they're not otherwise going to give us for anything, let them, okay? What that means, and then if the tourists who come here and spend $1,000 a night are willing to pay a tax in the stadium, let them. And what I would ask everyone to do, because I would love for Miss Janet to tell you what she got out of this stadium, because I think she will get something, right? What she will get, if we can recapture $100 million a year in the general budget, we can put it towards affordable housing and education. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good morning. Hi there, I'm Kristen Dinger. I live uh, in Councilman Cash's district and thank you all. And I think I'm the last one. So I'm gonna be really fast and just say that I would love to co-sign everything that Ms. Simone Boyd said. Simone is a community leader, a community activist and everything in terms of the deal that we got uh, with the soccer stadium and the community benefits that that brought to the actual people in Nashville is something that we have to replicate. We need to know who does the stadium benefit? And if we can't honestly and authentically say that it's the people of Davidson County in Nashville, then we can't move forward on this. So community benefits, I think have to be transparently done. We have to know who is actually benefiting. And before we can move forward, as Simone said, we just need to slow down and have the answers to the questions that folks like Stand Up and the Equity Alliance and others who you've heard from today are asking. And so I would just implore you, and I know you're all here for this exact same reason. I really appreciate that. And just make your best effort to really understand what we're getting ourselves into and understand who is this actually benefiting in the long run, because it needs to be the people who are here today. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Brad Rayson, 521 Central Avenue. I'm with SEIU. Um, you know, I appreciate your thoughtful approach uh, to this this issue. Um, use a bad pun. You know, it seems like the goalposts on what we actually currently owe on the stadium keep getting moved. Um, and the, the scope and the cost of the renovation just seems to get bigger and bigger as the Titans wish list grows. Um, and it seems like we're really trying to create a false narrative of what is our current obligation and what is our choice of building a new stadium. And this is also being skewed by the fact that a lot of the investments are tied to only one choice, a dome stadium versus fixing the stadium we have. Um, this is, decision has huge implications for our community. I mean, we're talking about the most expensive stadium ever built, ever built. And this is gonna be a decision that we're gonna to have to live with for decades, not just a few years, but decades. Like one woman was saying, we're building something that's gonna be around for a long time. On top of that, we seem like new information keeps getting trickled out all the time. There just seems like there's so many unanswered questions that why are, why are we rushing? And you know, we're, I guess we're only talking about a couple hundred million dollars here and then a few hundred million dollars over here. You know, maybe we'll get up to some real money at, at some point. Um, but we're, you know, we're, we have so many unmet needs in our city. We have education needs, we have housing, we have healthcare, we have public transportation needs. You know, we need schools for our kids. They can't go to school at Titan Stadium. We have people who need affordable housing. Tens of thousands of folks, they can't go live at Titan Stadium. We have healthcare needs. Nashville General Hospital needs a new facility. The people who need treatment at Nashville General Hospital can't get it at Titan Stadium. 
So we need to really take our time, do our due diligence here. This is too big a decision to rush. And if we really want our community to benefit, we need a real community benefit agreement. You know, it, it seems like we're just, a lot of folks just sort of toss around community benefits agreement, but it really means something. And there was talk about when we built the soccer stadium, we took our time, we had an agreement, it was transparent, it was enforceable, it guaranteed investment in affordable housing, childcare, good jobs, and more on top of that. So let's not rush into this. Let's make sure we make the right decision because it's, we're all gonna have to live with whatever that decision is. Thanks, yeah. Brian. Yes, sir. My name is William Robinson. I'm a native Nashvilleian. And I'm looking at our council, our elected council people. And one thing that resonates, it constantly resonates, like nothing, nothing's wrong. Everybody loves the idea of a new stadium. Bragging rights for Nashville. But I look at the news every day. Our infrastructure, mass invitation, mass transportation is a joke. I hate to get on the end of the state. It, it's crazy. Crime is going crazy. And we know with growth comes more people, and, and that's, that comes along with territory, okay? It's going to get worse. That, 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 that's, don't delude, delude ourselves. It's going to get worse. But we want bragging rights. I want a new stadium. It's, it sounds great. Something more to bring about Nashville. But when you look at the people that elected you, your constituents, these people are crying. Everybody's saying the same thing tonight over and over and over and over. They can't afford to live here. I know people, the working poor, middle class, they want homes, they want to live here. And they're crying, they can't afford homes. I know people work hard every day, good professional jobs, and can't afford to buy a house here. Your constituents are telling you, well, don't desert us, help us. What about the people that live in Nashville? Tourists, people, Nashville, tourists come to Nashville. Are you, you banking on the tourists or are you going to bank on the people that live here in Nashville? You got to make a decision. You are elected council people. Vote for the people or work for the people who elected you. Now you think about that. Good evening, council. My name is Jessica Williams and I have, I own property in District 6 one in 21. I'm a real estate development and I also have a real estate brokerage. I will say that last week on Saturday when I had to go to the Apple store to get my uh, computer fixed, I was completely disheartened in what I seen downtown. I could not walk from the parking garage to the Apple store without being bombarded with the opportunity to purchase some form of a marijuana substance. I seen kids walking around outside and this was just the atmosphere I saw, drunkenness, lostness, and sadness. And I just feel like I'm all for teamwork makes the dream work. If we can find a solution to create a stadium while also identifying the issues of Nashville, I think that's what needs to happen. Um, I feel like the current city of Nashville can't really enjoy the city. They can't go downtown and enjoy that. With the new stadium, does that only worsen the amount of junk people who are down there, like laid out on the side of the street? Uh, it's extremely disheartening. Now, I just came from Bordeaux to get a Subway sandwich in the Kroger's parking lot. I literally was approached by at least 10 different children begging to eat. They were selling their candy bars. I dug in my purse and I found $8 and I just said, here, I don't need to purchase the candy bar. That is disheartening. I honest to God felt that I was in a third war country. These children need education. It was dark. Their mother was on the phone asking, when you coming home? Where are you? They don't know where their children are at. And I just feel like before we can jump into a stadium, I'm from San Diego. We don't have the San Diego Chargers anymore. They sent them up the road to Los Angeles so they could figure their game plan out. 
But San Diego is a city that loves their residents. They weren't going to do anything that jeopardized the peace and love of that city. And I, that's what I would like to see in Nashville. Invest our money in parks, recreation, the children, and figure out a way if the stadium is going to be built or renovated, how is that going to benefit the people who live in this city? Because I do not feel that this city has done that. There's no sidewalks. There's nothing. People, it's, it's disheartening. I'm in real estate development. I want to see good development. I want to see smart development. I want to see houses. I want to see affordable housing. I want to see people to be able to afford their homes. The interest rates are outrageous at 7%. We got an affordable housing call from someone who makes $80,000 a year who could not afford a $250,000 home with their student loans. They got educated but cannot purchase a home. These are doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, teachers. They cannot live. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to make a comment? Uh, come on up. Hi, my name is Mac, and I live in uh, Sylvan Heights, and I've been gerrymandered into one of y'all's districts. Um, <laughs> just my street, too, like eight houses. I had my own voting booth. It was great. Um, I moved here from California. I was born here, but I moved back to California. And just like everybody else said, I can't afford to buy a home in Nashville as much as I would want to. I can't afford to rent a house in Nashville. I have to, God forbid, get on 24 and move down to Murfreesboro. Um, that would be terrible. And I would never be able to get to work. Um, but uh, I just really don't want to look at the world's largest Starbucks for the next 50 years. It looks hideous. I don't like it. I would love a new stadium. I want it to do all the things that everybody here wants it to do. I want it to help everyone. But I really just don't want to look at a Starbucks. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thanks. Anybody else? I, I see one person coming on up. Go ahead. Hi. Um. I'm sorry. I was kind of hesitant to come up here because I knew I would get emotional, but... Take your time. Um, I'm against the stadium because I have... Um, I'm an um, administrative professional, and um, I was at employed at my last employer for 20 years, and I lost my job, and so um, I have been unemployed for over a year, and... Realizing I never thought that I would go from here to here, but having to navigate and try to get resources. Uh, unemployment, 26 weeks is all you get. It's exhausted. Um, I thank God that I had savings and my 401k that has sustained me. Otherwise, I would really be in a bad situation. Uh, so... You, when I sit here and listen to, you know, you asking for the community to support a $2.1 billion playground, my roof is leaking. Can I get some help? You know, I just had to have a water heater replaced. I'm living on, you know, as I said, my savings. And I didn't know that it would be this difficulty, this difficult getting resources. Um, and employment, you know, of course, I'm looking for comparable, comparable employment to what I had um, because I was, it was in administration for 20 years. And so it has been very eye-opening and very disheartening that the resources here are for unemployed and those, as they say, the homeless, you know, there, there's just a lack of it. And I think that's what we need to focus on and not a stadium. We need to focus on the real needs of the community. So I say no. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to talk. E anybody else want to? Hi, my name is Kieran McKissick. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee. I drive to Atlanta a lot, 
and Nashville is kind of almost reflecting of Na of Atlanta because Atlanta built, they got rid of the Georgia Dome and then they built the Mercedes Benz. Maybe we need to look at what the model they did and then uh, figure out what we need to do here for the our stadium. Also, they did a new highway infrastructure and all the way into the city. So maybe we need to do something like that because I sat in traffic all day long and it's uh it's just ridiculous and then i'm a homeowner and then what the taxes what we have to pay and then they say we're gonna you can uh we're gonna have a freeze when you get 65 well i'm waiting to turn 65 to get this freeze but um I just want to see, like the everyone has said, education and the food and all of this uh, for the children. But we're going to spend all of this money for a stadium. And then, like the, someone said, uh, who all go there? Because most of the people who live here in the city, we can't afford to go to the game. So then if you're going to make it smaller, so the ticket's going to be higher. So we won't be there anyway. Or concerts, we won't be able to go because we won't be able to afford it. And then all of the brides that comes here on the scooters and up and down the street and then all the drunkenness and everything that goes on. You know, uh, we're going to have what? More of that. It's just, it's just ridiculous. But the stadium looked good. But, you know, look at other cities as how they built their stadiums and why should we have to have the highest paid stadium versus some of the other. Now, I don't think the Mercedes Benz Stadium, and it just was built maybe four or five years ago. I don't think it cost that amount, that amount of money. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Jonathan Williamson and uh, lifelong Nashvilleian, and I have some problems um, with this proposal. Uh, mainly the community impact, there is none. Um, a little slow to read, so I've been reading this entire time through the, thank you for putting up that uh, link there. It takes you to a lot of links. I just went to the Titans page, um, went to the one community the one community platform um, program that they're initiating, it's full of lies. Um, there's yet, I've read through here for the past hour or so, there's not one initiative in here that is tangible, um, equitable, nor beneficial to the Nashville community. Um, one in particular that stuck out to me as being a 15 year member of the Nashville, um, of just the NACP, um, it's stated in here that programs have been initiated last year. I'm on the executive committee. There is not. Um, so that's a lot. Um, there's a lot of rhetoric, and I'm sure you all are familiar with what that is. You all have to deal with that on a weekly basis. It's full of that. Um, uh, the representative, the great lady from TSU came and stated, the three points of education, neighborhoods, and opportunity would be something that's a benefit. That's a lie. Um, $18 an hour, that's, that's cap, as we like to say, that's a lie. That's not beneficial, that's not equitable, that's not providing of the cost of wage that we currently have in this city. Um, all the bullet points, literally, anyway, I implore everyone to go look at this, seriously. It's not this project, what the Titans are giving back is not enough and it's not substantial to the community. There is nothing for historic purposes. And she hasn't raised that yellow one yet, so I got a second. Um, before they started with this, I was on the, um, the East Bank Committee and that's been going on for three or four years. It's been quite good. Um, meetings they've been having, I thought that was positive. I went to them and I'm more of a, I like historical aspect and especially about our city here. There, there was no emphasis towards that. I mentioned things for, um, placards for um, old buildings to be remodeled. Um, if they built the East Bank, maybe there's something in the area that could show the urban art districts, um, the paintings, the, the music. And it was heard, but it clearly wasn't done. And if it was going to done, if it was being implemented, it definitely should have been in this one community project. Still hasn't been done. Um, it's nowhere in here. Um, the community is not being benefited whatsoever. Um, the stadium, I love the Titans all the way. I got an early Oilers jersey, probably my back trunk right now. And I, I know we need some better 
um, infrastructure for our stadium, but when it's not benefiting the community, I have an extreme problem with that. And anyone that is a part of that one community group, I would like to meet you after this, because I have a problem. And I would like for you to address me directly if you think otherwise. Thank you very um, much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hello, Cherise De Silva. So I live in Nashville. I moved from New York. And um, I am just so against um, the idea of robbing Peter to pay Paul. So um, when the first proposal came out, we didn't know how bad it was. That information was not being put forth like it is today. Um, this is, I don't see a SWOT analysis. Um, and what I do know is during COVID, uh, children were working instead of doing virtual school at home because they had to help their families. Um, what I do know is that this state, and I'm not saying that New York is great, I'm not saying that this um, state is, is worse in that sense, but we have to look at the dynamics that we have here. Um, places like New York offer a lot more benefits to people that are low income. I'm not even talking about middle income because I don't know how many people in Nashville are middle income. Um, many of us have had to work multiple jobs to be able to take care of our families. And even at $18 an hour that they're proposing, you can't live on that and take care of your family no, today. No. So the people that will be what terrifies me with this big of a development. Number one, I don't understand how you could go from 300 million to 2.1 billion. Our minimum wage is still 725 in Tennessee. So I, I don't know where they get that number from, but if you ain't got it, you don't deserve it. You can't afford Louis, don't buy Louis. You understand what I mean? So it bothers me because the people that had to go to work during COVID work jobs that could not pay COVID pay for them to stay home. So again, if we go through a situation like that, what are gonna, what's gonna happen to those people who live in Nashville and have been here for very many years? The plan does not show what's, what, how it affects the people that actually live and have to work here and are trying to raise children in a more, um, in a time that's just unprecedented with all the challenges that they face with social media and everything else that they see vying for their attention. And we're not preparing them to be able to go and get a job that they can afford to take care of themselves and contribute to the city. And when we bring these big corporations in, they're just going to bring more big corporations in and it's not going to help us. We're going to continue to be the ones struggling as they're making the money and we're going to pay for it in so many different ways. And uh, I mean, like this gentleman said, he said it right. And the lady that lived in New York, like I, we, this city does not give resources like others to help you during COVID. People that were making eighty and ninety thousand dollars a year that could not pay their rent were able to get rental assistance. That does not happen in Nashville. So I think we have to think of the dynamics that we have here. If the General Assembly wants to give us five hundred billion, you know the plan ain't fiscally responsible because they ain't giving us health care. So Thanks. I mean that already in of itself. They do not support this. You know, you understand? Like we are, it's a super majority there. We can't get what we need statewide and within our vicinity where we where where the reach is closer. We're going to agree to a two point. I don't even know how they came up with that number. I hate to you cut, don't have it. I hate to cut you off when you're on a run. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. All right. Anybody else after this, please come on, get up in line. Uh, hi, I'm Scott. I'm on Long Avenue. I'm in um, Councilman Withers' district. Um, and I just had a question that I want uh, people to consider when we're looking at this deal and, uh, and this stadium. And, and the question is, why now? You know, is that uh, obviously, like, our community has a lot of other priorities right now that people have spoken passionately about. Affordable housing, education, transportation, 
you know, I, I think if you asked anybody, nobody would have said this year that their top pri priority for Nashville was a stadium. Um, now, I understand that with the existing lease, we've got certain obligations to the Titans, uh, you know, regarding a renovation or a new stadium. I know the state, uh, in some sense, you know, thinks they've got us over a barrel to force us to take this one option. But I think that there's... Uh, there ought to be enough time, again, for the big, biggest public investment in a stadium um, for, uh, for in American history. Uh, we ought to be able to take longer uh, to, to look at this, to make up our minds, to say, like, why now? You know, uh, we've gone, the Nissan Stadium's 25 years old. I don't know that it's that much, you know, crappier now than it was three, four years ago. It'll still be there in another two, three, four years, uh, you know, in, in reasonably fine condition. I don't know why we can't take uh, a longer period to get the best deal for Nashville that we're going to get, to get the best deal for Nashville residents that we're going to get in the form of a real community benefits agreement that is enforceable uh, in court that the Titans can be held to. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that we can get the, the best deal uh, for our city. So that's, that's my statement is that we look and saying like, uh, are we going to be voting on this this month because the mayor and the team want to push things through as quickly as possible? Or are we going to take the time uh, to address this and make sure that we're getting the, the best deal that we can? So that's, that's what I would say. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right, last call. Anybody else? This, I think everybody's talked now. Um, all right, I, on behalf... Uh, oh, go ahead, sir. That remarks probably the briefest of all, because I'm old-fashioned. If the ownership of the Titans want to build a new stadium, let them dig into their own pockets and build it. And if they don't like it, they can leave. The Raiders left uh, Oakland for Los Angeles at one time. The coach from Maryland went to Indiana. So if they're not happy, let them go. All right. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. On behalf of um, all my council colleagues here, you know, we we're we're having five of these sessions around the county um, because we we want just this the feedback for from y'all. Um, uh, please take a look at um, the web page that we've got, and if you have any questions, please email any of us or all of us. Um, thank you very much for coming to tell us uh, what you think about it. Appreciate it. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.